Exodus 29 and 43. And our foundational scripture, it says in Exodus 29 and 43, and there I will meet with the children of Israel and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And, and we're in this series dealing with communion with God in November. And we understand once again, November is the month of communion for our church. And God, y'all, is actually calling the body of Christ to communion. Amen. It's not only just proclaiming faith, but the Holy Spirit has been talking to me. And God is calling the body of Christ to communion. And we understand that communion has to do with intimacy, oneness, togetherness, and fellowship with God. This is, this is what I have been preaching on on last Sunday. And we know that when we are in communion with the Lord, then, then we commune with him. We have conversation with our Heavenly Father because communion is about sharing and exchanging. And I, and I talked about when we share our, our heart and our mind and our thoughts with the Lord, then he will share his thoughts with us. And, and, and God will let you know that in, in a secret place of fellowship and intimacy, that, that his thoughts, y'all, and his plans for our life is greater than ours. Amen. And that they far a, uh, surpasses human capabilities, uh, uh, human capabilities to comprehend. That's why it says in Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declare the Lord. Verse 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and your thoughts, uh, my thoughts than your thoughts. So we know, Lord, uh, that God, his, 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 his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are, are higher than ours. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and so today I want to talk about on today the benefits of, of communion with God. That's that's what I want to talk about on today. The benefits of communion with God. Because there are some benefits that come along with being in intimacy and fellowship with God. Amen. And I'm not going to be long. I just want to lay this foundation as, as we're still in this month of communion. And, and, and on, on next Sunday, on the 21st, we will be having our in a person service and we will be having communion. Amen. And I just want to lay the groundwork because we're dealing with communion. And, and so, like I said, there are benefits of us having communion with God and, and, and the benefits they come along with being in intimacy and fellowship with God. And, and when you have a close relationship with God, hallelujah, that, that it brings along those those benefits when we are in communion with God. And the, and the main reason why so many uh, are, are not experiencing their, their, their true potential and their highest potential in God is because they're not in fellowship. They're not in communion with God. And, and, and see, there, there's a lot of people who are, who are not connected to God like they should be. In the body of Christ, and we need to continue, y'all, to abide in Christ in order to reap the benefits of staying connected with him by being close to God and having a close relationship with him. Hallelujah, because that's part of us bearing more fruit. Amen. That's why it says in St. John chapter 15, verses 4 through 6, it says, abide in me and in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except ye abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, I in him, the same bring, it says, brings forth much fruit. For without me, you cannot do nothing. Jesus is saying, without me, you cannot do nothing. Verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth 
as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. So, so what this uh, particular text is saying, y'all, is once we disconnect ourselves from fellowship with Christ and we are no longer in close relationship with him as one with the Father, y'all, we, we, we lose our benefits of bearing fruit. Amen. Because we're no longer abiding in Christ and Christ abiding in us. Amen. And, 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 and we no longer have a close relationship with him, like I said, as one with the Father. And we lose our benefits of bearing fruit when we are no longer abiding in Christ and in the things of God. Amen. So, so then you become spiritually withered, which means you are spiritually dying. And, and, and when you are disconnected from God, you are cast into the fire of tribulation and suffering in your life. That, that's what that particular text is talking about in, in St. John chapter 15, when it talks about men come and gather, gather you in, 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 and, and throw you in the fire and then you're burnt. It's basically talking about once we become disconnected with Christ, you're going to be going through some things. You, you're going to be, the saints will begin to start going through some things. When we begin to unplug ourselves and, and we disconnect from, from God, we're no longer abiding. We're no longer in communion. We're no longer in fellowship with God. Then we end up going through the suffering, the fire, the tribulation. Amen. And so it says in the W.E.B. Bible in Proverbs chapter 13 and 15, it says, it says, good understanding gives favor, but the way of the unfaithful, y'all, is hard. And so what we must understand when it comes to communion, y'all, there has to be a closeness when, when it comes to God. This is what Jesus is saying. He even talking about communion in, 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 in uh, St. John chapter 15. That's why he said, if you abide in me and I abide in you. And he's telling you that you bear much fruit because when we are in communion with, with God and, and fellowship and intimacy with the father, you, woo, hallelujah, you're going to bear much fruit. There, there's benefits that are coming forth. And so this is what I'm talking about on today. Um, the benefits that, that come along with communion that comes along with intimacy and fellowship with God. And, and, and you see it all the time when, when people begin to separate and disconnect themselves from the things of God, disconnect themselves from Christ, they begin to start going through something. Because y'all, sin, it brings in tribulation. It brings in tribulation, which leads us to destruction. This is what the Bible is saying. Proverbs chapter 13 and 15. Good understanding gives favor. Understanding of God's word gives us favor. Get a hey, hallelujah gives us grace. But the way of the unfaithful, another translation says, the way of the transgressor is hard. That's what that's what the Bible is saying. The way of the transgressor, the way of the sinner is hard. It's saying it's rough, y'all. In other words, Jesus is saying. You're going to go through something. Without me, you're going to go through something. You're blessed now, but when you depart from me, you're going to be cursed. This, this is what the word is saying. Amen. And, and, and so what I'm saying on today is there's benefits when we come in communion with God, when we come in fellowship with God. And so real quick, and I know it, it seems like I'm going to be on here and then off here. But like I said, I'm laying the foundation because on, on next Sunday, we're going to be having communion at the church and in, in-person in service. Because y'all, this, this right here is very important. And and, and let me, I, I just want to say this by the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I, I really believe that this is prophetic because I feel in my spirit that God is positioning us to come closer to to him because y'all there's some stuff that's getting ready to happen I, I, I feel that there's a shaking that, that's, that's, that's taking place 
I'm not talking about no doom and gloom. I'm talking about God is getting his people in position because God always protect his people, y'all. He always protect us. He always covers us. Amen. And, and, and so I want to talk about the three benefits that we get out of having communion with God. When we are in his presence and, and in uh, uh, intimacy with God, these, these are the three benefits that you will receive in his presence. The three benefits that you will receive in his presence is talking, teaching, and touching. I want to say that again. Talking, teaching, and touching. The, 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 those are the three benefits that you're going to re receive when you are in communion with God. Amen. Because you remember on Sunday, last, last week, I talked about communion, how it brings forth divine manifestation, and, and it also brings forth spiritual encounter with God. You know, God, God can manifest himself to you. Jesus is real, y'all. That's why the Bible says, draw nigh to him, and he will draw nigh to you. Amen. When we're talking about communion. And so these are the three benefits that you will receive in his presence when you are in that secret place. When you are in that a secluded private place, nobody but you and Jesus on one on one. I, I want to talk about talking, teaching and touching. Those are those those three things. Number one, talking. We have an advantage and a privilege to communicate with God as a friend, y'all. That, that's one of the benefits that you get when you are in communion with the Father. You, you have an advantage and a privilege to communicate with God as a friend and to know the mind of God concerning his will for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and as well as the purpose and the plans that he had for you. Amen. It's just like I said, when you begin to share your thoughts with God, God will begin to share his thoughts with you. And, and, and how I talked about how it said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said, I know my thoughts towards you. Uh, uh, thoughts, thoughts of good and not of evil and to give you a hope and a future. See, that that's God in an intimate a uh, setting, hallelujah, sharing his thoughts with you. Amen. As you share your thoughts with him, hallelujah. When, when, when you're going through something and, 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 and you have cares and concerns, the Bible says, cast your cares on him for he cares for you. And so when we're in that secret, uh, uh, private moment off with a, a one-on-one -on -one with God, that's, that's, that, that's that communion. And, and, and so that's the number one benefit that, that you receive in, uh, while you're in communion is talking. It's talking with God. Hallelujah. God will begin to communicate with you as a friend. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so it says in Exodus 33 and 11, inside the tent of the meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses, y'all, face to face. As one speak to a friend, as one speak to a friend, God was speaking to Moses face to face as one would speak to a friend. See, that, that's the benefit and the advantage of, of being in communion with God. God will begin to start speaking to you. Not only that, as I begin to read on, it says afterwards, Moses would return to camp, but the young man assisted him. Joshua, son of Nun, would remain behind in the tent of meeting. See, see, when you are in the meeting place with God, you will come out God conscious and no longer self conscious. Amen. You will be aware of the things of God. Hallelujah. See, see, God will begin to start talking to you that those are the the, the advantage and 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 uh, the privilege that you receive. When in, in communion, he will begin to start talking to you. He will even begin to start exposing some people. He will begin to start showing you who's for you and who's against you. Speak, Holy Ghost. Woo, hallelujah. See, that's, that's the advantage that you get when you are in communion. Hallelujah. God will begin to start showing you some things. 
No, nah, no, nah, you don't need to be with him. You don't need to be with, with, with that person. He'll, he'll even show you the, the, the plots and the schemes and the plans even on your job, even at your workplace. Speak, Holy Ghost. See, 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 that's one of the benefits of being in communion, being in fellowship with God. God will begin to expose some stuff, begin to start talking to you and showing you some things, communicating with you. Hallelujah. Because communion, it brings communing, which means talk, conversation, when you are in fellowship and intimacy with the Father. So, so that's number one. Number two is teaching. That's one of the benefits that we get uh, for being in communion with the Father is teaching. God will counsel you and he will show you what to do in his presence. There's some training going on uh, uh, in his presence. He will give you instructions and he will teach you and train you how to fight. Y'all, because we're dealing with spiritual warfare. We're dealing with some spiritual warfare in this hour. I mean, even with, with demonic activity that, that's going on. I know y'all seen the stuff that's going on on the news with the concert. With, 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 with Travis Scott, uh, um, his concert, and how uh, eight souls uh, died that very same night. And then a few days later, uh, another person died. Not Nine souls gone. Y'all, that's something spiritual. That's something spiritual. And, and, and see, what you see in the natural is what's going on in the spiritual. And the Holy Ghost is saying, that's warfare. Hallelujah. It lets you know that Satan is bold in this hour. He's doing stuff right there in your face. And, and, and so the saints, y'all, we got to be equipped. We got to be trained by the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and so when we in that secret place of the Most High, and we begin to commune with God, God will teach us how to fight. Hallelujah. He will teach us how to fight. He will give us instructions on what to do. He will give us, uh, um, he will equip us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. With, with the whole armor of God. Y'all remember that teaching that I did about the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. And, and, and see, um, he, he, will, he can equip you, hallelujah, in that secret place uh, uh, and, and prepare you for whatever attack that may try to come your way. And he will cultivate you and develop you for the next season and the next level in your life. And that's why it says in Psalms 144 and 1, y'all, it says, Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war. And my fingers to fight. Woo! Hallelujah. See, that's the benefit of being in communion with, with, with God. Knowing how to fight. Knowing how to do spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. The, uh, those spiritual warfare prayers and, and being a prayer warrior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, God can show you all of that. All, all we have to do is get in his presence. All we have to do is fellowship with him. You may not even be on that level, but even if you just take some time to get off to yourself, to clear your mind and say, Lord, help me. Even if you, hey, whoa, hallelujah, rocking back and forth and saying, Lord, help me. And tears begin to roll down your eyes. God knows tear language. Hallelujah. He knows what's in your heart and, and what you're trying to convey in your spirit. Even if you cannot articulate or, or quit trying to think that you have to pray a certain type of way. God wants your attention. God wants you, hallelujah, to be in his presence. Hallelujah. Just to be there. Hallelujah. To pursue his presence. Amen. And last but not least, number three, hallelujah, touching. Hallelujah. God will touch you with his anointing. When we are in communion with the Father, in intimacy and in fellowship, hallelujah, in his presence, God will touch you with his anointing. When you are in his presence, he can touch you in your spirit. He can touch your body by removing sickness. Uh, uh, he can touch you with healing. 
He, hallelujah, he can touch you with deliverance in his presence. When, when he touches you, uh, depression has to go. When he touches you, stress and anxiety has to go. When he touches you, oppression has to go. Because, hallelujah, when he touches you, he touches you with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you're touched by his grace. See, see, when God has his hand on you, then you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Y'all, that's why we got to continue to return back, hallelujah, to fellowship and communion with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In our prayer life, hallelujah, because there's benefits, y'all, when we are in communion with God. Amen. Communion is, is more than just the Lord's Supper. Uh, 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 the breaking of the bread and, and, and the drinking of, of, of the blood of the Lord's Supper that, that we do as, as symbolic as, as the Lord's Supper. But this is something that God requires of us every day is communion with him, fellowship with him, intimacy with him. With all the chaos and the things that's going on in the world, y'all, God is trying to equip us in our spirit to automatically come in communion with him, fellowship with him, hallelujah, to receive those benefits, hallelujah, from the Father, to, to, to begin to start bearing much fruit in Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm done. I'm, I, I want to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this word on today. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're drawing us closer, Lord, to you, Lord, Father God, with communion and intimacy and fellowship, Lord, Father God, in your spirit, Lord, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, Father God, that you're allowing us to start somewhere, Lord, Father God, with our prayer life, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Even, Lord, Father God, we, we even know that, that meditation consist of communion hallelujah lord allow us to get in a place lord father god that that we get away from the noise lord father god and put on some worship music and just have our mind on you because lord you said in your word in, in isaiah that those that keep their mind on you that you will keep them in perfect peace and so lord we just thank you lord father god we thank you for your word lord father god we thank you lord that you're bringing us uh, uh forward lord and even on the message on, on next Sunday uh, dealing with communion, Lord. How, how we know that communion, it brings forth a new covenant. And so, Lord, just allow us to be quick, Lord, Father God, and prepare, Lord, as, as we take communion on next Sunday, Lord. Hallelujah. That we do it with a willing heart, Lord, Father God, because we want to be close to you, Lord. We want to be, hallelujah, in communion with you, Lord. We want to be uh, uh, together with you and be partakers, Lord, Father God. God. Uh, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord, Father God. Even just for this word, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, for us to hear a word, Father God, that's able to keep us, that's able to sustain us, Lord, that's able to deliver us and set us free. And Lord, we just thank you. We just give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.